York is quickly becoming the epicenter for, for soccer in the United States. For me, when I think of, of the city and, and soccer, it's not from the outside as a fan, it's actually people kicking ball around. You know, New York definitely has everything from, from top to bottom. The best thing about football in New York is, is the diversity of people who come together to play such a fun sport. Uh, you have the young kids that come out and play recreational soccer. You have the competitive leagues that exist with professionals uh, who work here in New York. And then you have the strong supporters that you know, come to the bars on Saturday morning and wake up and cheer uh, Arsenal and Man United and, and their favorite European club team. So it's, uh, it's great to see how soccer has evolved in the United States, uh, but more so here in New York. Football is our language. We don't really need to speak the same language, French or Portuguese. You bring a soccer ball in New York City, right away you have people coming up to you and, hey, can I play with you? Can I try? Even if they're in business clothes and soccer uniform. It's a beautiful thing here in New York City. They come from everywhere, and uh, it's a, it just brings people here together. I play five to six days a week. It's the world city, it's the world sport. Every ethnic, cultural background is in New York, so I think international when I think soccer in New York. I think for a long time, what would set New York City apart, and maybe the U.S. apart to some degree, was that it was a soccer-less space. Soccer in Europe has a much longer history, and when you're born to a family in Italy or Germany or Scandinavia, you're immediately a fan of a team. In the United States, it's relatively new. I mean, you had to fight to find something. There was almost a sort of guerrilla atmosphere towards finding something, um, you know, as a fan. Related to related to soccer. It started out as a white suburban middle class sport, and with people that had money. And now it's everybody: the immigrants, college kids, high school kids, boys and girls, girls, guys, kids, dogs. The push of soccer in the U.S. occurs on on different levels and from different for different reasons. Obviously, it had always been there as actually a, a practiced sport. Slowly but surely, it's been growing. Football is not just a competitive thing. It's, a, it's about having fun, showing off your skills, and just try to help the sport grow across the, the nation. The proliferation of television outlets uh, made it so that all of a sudden it was much more available. Um, with the time difference with, with Europe, it was kind of perfect it worked as a TV product. MLS had a lot to do with it. I think the building of, of soccer-specific stadiums up and down the country had a lot to do with it. You know, you could go and you could experience a live sporting event in a way that hadn't been done before. We have the best stadiums, we have great television, and now we're developing great fans. And the other thing is, um, a lot of European, major European clubs and Mexican clubs started touring the U.S. So all of a sudden you were delivering Manchester United and uh, Real Madrid and, and Barcelona and Milan and teams like this to the United States and they said, hey, this is a big deal, let's go. And that's why they were able to, to sell out 50, 60, 70,000 seat stadium in the U.S. I've played professionally in uh, Croatia, Sweden, France, England, Norway, uh, and in the United States. I was drafted in 2008 to the Red Bulls. Red Bull, well, occasionally, they, they, don't, you know, they don't always sell out their stadiums. They, they show that you can bring a genuine soccer experience to New York City in 2013. That was the present, and that may be the future. Cosmos remains the past. The Cosmos are coming back, but it's been a very long journey back. The best experience I had with the New York Cosmos was the honor of playing with Pelé, winning a championship and playing in his final game. We played against his old team, Santos, at Giant Stadium, in front of a sold out crowd of 80,000 people. And at the end of the game, it was pouring rain and the people were crying and applauding. And we all put Pelé on our shoulders and carried him around the field and said, Psst, take me one more time around. It was just uh, 
a party, but it was an honor to play in his final game. People remember what Cosmos met, with Kinalia and Pelé and those guys. But I think the sense of the Cosmos is Cosmos is a style, it's, it's a brand. And that's why they still resonate. I mean, it's, this is a team which hasn't really played at the highest level or, or even existed for much of the last 20 years. And yet, it still is the number one soccer brand in the US, despite David Beckham spending five years in LA. Uh, that's pretty remarkable. Soccer in New York in the next five years is going to explode because it's getting more popular every day. There's a professional team called Red Bulls. They have Thierry Henry. Manchester City just bought a team with the New York Yankees. And the New York Cosmos are coming back. So I think the next five years in New York, it's going to be unbelievable. I think in 10, 20 years' time, we won't be speaking of you know Brazilian footballs like this, German footballs like that, New York footballs like this. It's going to be meaningless. I think it's all going to be, you know, <laughs> it's a globalized game. The barriers have, have fallen. People dream of being this kind or that one, regardless of where they're from. And I think New York reflects that very well.